जननी शारदा देवी राम कृष्ण जगत गुरु पाद पद्मे तयो श्रीवा प्रणमा मुर्मु श्री राम कृष्ण इज गॉन टू विद्यासागर साहूस so many people have gathered no place inside some are hanging outside to windows and doors listening to masters sweet voice and advices every day silence is there shri ram krishna is speaking talking to all Vidya Sagar, surprised with the wisdom on one side, what all exists beyond our perception, and the compassion and love with which Master has come to his house. The whole situation is in such a state that everyone. Has forgotten time and space, and it is continuing, continuing. Sri Ram Krishna is making the Vidya Sagar a nimitta, an occasion. He is giving an inexhaustible knowledge that is going to be there in this universe forever. the jnana how to live in the world and attain god how to reach the absolute perfection without giving up the duties of life to love this world to serve all beings to take care of the family and to realize god how best we can utilize our life is love the same life in ignorance and delusion which makes us bound more and more by the karmic load by the vasana tendencies they create and the same thing if the attitude changes that it belongs to me we understand accept the reality we are in delusion we say this all belongs to me in when the knowledge comes when reality just the reality is brought into picture oh nothing belongs to me even this body i could live and go everything is with that the whole thing ends all my relationship with everything the what i possess as mine will end my bodily existence also ends i have to travel alone all this belongs to god in pulling my body and mind which i call i will also go away so the when we know the all this belongs to god it becomes the same activity same life life doesn't change that need not be changed all things will go on as it is the sense that it belongs to god instead of belongs to me which is unreal we will take the reality simply reality that it belongs to god then the whole thing becomes a path to realization path to liberation path path to eternal freedom bliss love and peace so the attitude changes mine is karma god says worship or just a shift of awareness no shift of life or activity or same life same thing 
one binds the other, releases, other attitude releases, just like key and lock. One side you turn, it locks. Another side you turn, it unlocks. We have to, Sri Ramakrishna expects us to know, understand the truth and bring it to our awareness. With death, everything ends. So, have the attitude of reality, accept the reality, immediately you see that you are spiritually unfolding. One should constantly remember death. Nothing will survive death. We are born into this world to perform certain duties. See, these duties are not imposed by someone. It is according to our own past karmas and past tendencies, the old moment, past momentum which we have gained running into the world. The momentum continues and the karmic world also, the action and reaction are equal and opposite. The karmic world also increases. Whatever I have done, good and bad, during life, in one life or other, I have to work it out. So these two are the causes. They decide where I should be, how shall I work out my karmas. So, born into this world to perform certain duties, like the people who come from countryside to Calcutta on business, they come for business, they stay for a few days and go away. Similarly, we come to this world, work out our karmas and go away. How they collect money, sell their powers, collect their money and go away. That, that we can get rid of the karma and earn spiritual wealth and go or spend the money in purchasing this that enjoy and empty our pockets and go. So what we are doing is we are acquiring our dirt and spending our life spending our money and collecting unwanted things, throwing away things in this world and we are going. Uh, a businessman who comes for business, he sees that whatever he invests, whatever he sells, he makes a profit and go. So we make a profit in this world when we understand everything belongs to Lord. Hmm. If a visitor goes to a rich man's garden, the superintendent tells to him, this is my garden and so forth. Uh, when the visitor comes, oh, this is our main house, this is where we grow, this is our field, mango grow, this is our the apple grew and all will go on showing. This is our garden, this is our uh, river, all our, our mind, mind. But when he is sent away, he cannot take anything. Hmm. We see even in the offices and all, I will take you to my office. Uh, he is working there for a few days. Hmm. This is our office room, this is my table, this is my computer, all belongs to the company where he is working. But he shows us my office, will you come to my office one day? Uh, I, yes, I will come to your office one day and before you get retirement or before you are spent, sent away. Mm. So this is what we see, it is not my it is somebody's. But when we are sent away, I can neither take the table nor the computer, let alone the rest of the things. God loves on two occasions. See, remember 
death constantly Sri Ramakrishna is telling in Bengal when I was there in training center and other times when I was in Bang Bengal in those days I don't know the present situation in 70s, 80s and on every bus inside there will be one writing Mrityu or Bhagavan Bhulana don't forget God and death. Almost all vehicles I saw inside when we said in the print, don't forget God and death. These are the two realities. All other things come and go. God laughs on two occasions. He laughs when the, the physician says to the patient's mother, don't be afraid, mother. I shall certainly cure your boy. God loves saying to himself, I am going to take his life and this man says, I will save it. The physician thinks he is master, forgetting that God is the master. God loves again when two brothers divide their land with a string saying this, saying to each other, this side is mine, that side is yours. God laughs and says, the whole universe belongs to me. But they say, they own this position or that position, or this portion or that portion. You see, from morning till night, if you watch, you introspect your own words and your own thoughts, your own feelings, how many times and how many things will be telling uh, I, mine and for me that uh, why did you enter my room? Whose room? Hmm. Mother was asking a child, you have no business to enter my room. Why did you, what did you see, what did you, what do you wanted? Hmm. How much of division, 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 division? We have no sense of, we totally forget God. We totally forget this whole thing belongs to someone. I am here for two, two days. What I have come to earn, I have to earn. I have to transcend the nature and go beyond. How long to loiter here in this world from one body to another body? Sometimes animal body, sometimes insect, sometimes in some other planes and human body. We don't understand the reality. We don't come to the reality at all. We are in a dream-like state seeing this world and identifying with this body. Sri Ramakrishna expects us accept the reality, face the life, utilize the opportunity, transcend and reach. Everything is given to you, both to transcend and go or to go, get involved into this world, both are in your hands. Both are placed before you and you select now. God makes all things, gives the knowledge also. In Bhagavad Gita we see in Krishna telling the whole Bhagavad, Bhagavad Gita and last, even requesting him to surrender to him, Sarva Dharman Parityacha. All, even after telling that, last he gives the option, Yate Chasitataku. Whatever you think, I have, what I have to tell, I have told God is telling the Jiva, you see. What all I have to tell, I have told you for your good, for your evolution, for your happiness, for your release. What all I have to tell. Now it is you in your hand. You have to do. Whatever you think is good, you do. It teaches it. Whatever you think, you do. Ultimately, it depends upon. Many times knowledge Given also face, the old samskaras and vasanas are so powerful, 
in spite of knowing the truth and falsehood of all this demonstrated before their eyes, they won't be able to because past momentum, momentum is so powerful that it drags the jiva into the world. So, I comes before and the God comes much later in our life when all things fail, when all people's desert, people desert us and go away. Mm-hmm. God loves it two places. Can one know God through reasoning? Be his servant, surrender yourself to him and then pray to him to Vidyasagar with a smile. Well, what is your attitude? Now, Sri Ramakrishna, just like Bhagavad Gita being told to Arjuna, he goes on daily. He is listening and Listening and reasoning also. The constant reasoning goes on. When we listen to someone, the mind is already referring to the past experiences and the intellect, buddhi, goes on analyzing, reasoning out. Uh, Whatever uh, is reasoning accepts, he takes. Whatever reasoning doesn't accept, he argues. Uh, we see this constant reasoning, anybody talking anything, the listener will always, doesn't take as it is without reasoning, without giving his, his opinion on that. Though he doesn't have the knowledge of that. Especially when we come to spiritual world and regarding God and religion. The other side, the person who is teaching God, religion and spirituality is seeing from another side, beyond the reach of this person who is listener. If it has to satisfy his reasoning, reasoning comes in the world of duality. <clears throat> beyond nature reasoning cannot be applied because the beyond nature is not governed by law of cause and effect for every cause there is an effect and behind everything what is there in whatever state there is a perfect definite reason behind this chair is here in this form there is a definite reason, reason behind I am like this because there is a perfect reason behind. I have passed through various lives, various experiences that has made me like this. Each person is there in his state because his past is deciding. He is present. Whatever is he was his past he is the present. Effect of that is present. This cause and law of cause and effect doesn't apply to the realm transcendental. It applies within it. All reasoning can be used only within the realm of time and space. When you are going beyond time and space, it is law, different law applies. And the earlier the better you renounce the reasoning, buddhi. Buddhi visarchana has to happen before you enter the realm beyond. So here reasoning has a reasoning can take you from A to B, but love can take you beyond and God's grace can make you reach the ultimate. Reasoning doesn't take you even to the inner apartments, even to realization. Guru's grace, God's grace and elders' prayers so many things combined and a little efforts of ours 
in the direction small amount that we do is boosted up by all other things and we reach the goal. So we have to see that Sri Ramakrishna says reasoning cannot make you reach. Reasoning doesn't apply in that field. Can one really know God through reasoning? The whole of science depends upon reasoning. And this reasoning doesn't apply into the other realm. The modern youths, modern society doesn't want to accept God or anything because the spirituality, God and religion and all, they don't want to accept because it doesn't satisfy their reasoning. Many things do not satisfy their reasoning. And reasoning is not to be applied there. It is governed by a different law. Just like matter, the law pertaining to matter, you cannot apply to life. Life is entirely different. Human exists life on this earth. Varieties of lives are there, majority species are there. They are governed by a different law. The law that is applicable to matter doesn't apply to life. Water, the law that applies to the world doesn't apply to the dimensions beyond this world. So reasoning cannot, can never take us to the realm beyond, but love can take us. If the same reasoning is purified as a introspection into the reality. It's an enquiry into the reality. There are two types of reasoning. Reasoning is seeing from scientific attitude of pros and cons. Uh, if this is true, this is that argumental tarka form, then you cannot know the truth. There is another form of reasoning. Uh, it is Tattva Vichara. Vichara and Tarka are different. Vichara is enquiry into the reality. I want to know, I am searching, discovering. The discovery I am searching, the searching discovery is one field. My argumentative, if God is there, why should there be suffering? This kind of argumental mind cannot reach. I want to know, in spite of God, why there is suffering? His enquiry into the reality. If God is there, why there is suffering? He is a argumental uh, reasoning. The tarka. Uh, in spite of God being there, why there is suffering? He is an enquiry into the reality. I am entering in a field where I am going to search for the reality. What are the laws that are governing in human life? I am entering into some field. This is called enquiry into the reality. It is, it is the way to transcend the nature and go. We call it Jnana Yoga. But to enter into that Jnana Yoga, I must be qualified. I must have a few qualifications that when I try to reason out what is God? Reason out. Not argue, but reason out. This reasoning is enquiry into the reality. This reasoning, vichara, vichara viveka, the other part is tarka, argumental. This when I adopt viveka and this one, my attitudes are different. My aim is different. My intellect is different. The intellect that is applied to the normal world gets refined, purified by my attitude to know. The nature enforces, reinforces in that a spiritual element, a higher element 
to understand the secrets of nature and go beyond, transcend and go beyond. And this we call Dhi, Dhi Yoyona Prachodayat, awaken my spiritual consciousness. So the buddhi, normal intellect, gets converted into spiritual intellect, Dhi, which can understand the laws of nature governing life and beyond. It can see God, it can understand God, it can comprehend God, it can understand the scriptures. So, but this goes with tremendous faith and belief. We will be surprised that Jnana has belief or faith. It has to accept the Guru's words and scripture's words. Um, Brahmasmi, he has not realize, nor it can be realized. He has to do the Anusandana with faith in the Guru's words, in faith in the scriptures, he moves ahead. Hmm. The faith, same faith which is there in science, the same faith which is there in Bhakti Yoga, the same faith is applied here in Jnana Yoga also. This whole setup we see, we are moving with Reason. This reasoning is different. When Sri Ramakrishna says reasoning, can reasoning take you? Mm. It is reasoning, dry reasoning, argument for argument's sake, not for the sake of realization. So that kind of reasoning will never take you to God. It is the love of God that takes us ultimately to the reality. Can one know God through reasoning? Be his servant. For all normal people, this is the path to realization. Be his servant. Surrender yourself to him and then pray to him. Vidya Sagar with a smile. Well, to Vidya Sagar with a smile. Well, what is your attitude? Uh, he gives whole thing about the spiritual life, attainments and to the ultimate reality of enlightened soul living in this world, living an exemplary life and all that and gives the final verdict till be as just accept God, love God, have passionate attachment for God, pray to Him, love Him. By this, because all the ordinary souls is e the easiest way and any person, irrespective of his past, irrespective of his, there is no qualification needed in the path of reasoning, tremendous qualification. Nitya Nitya Vastu Veka, Iha Mutra Phalaboga Viraga, Shabadavadi Shatsampat, Mumukshatva, all these you have to acquire before you enter into here nothing. Just with eyes open, with eyes closed, doing all the duties as it is without changing the style even of the work. Just the if turn your face to God. A thing called God is there. That much understanding is sufficient. Small understanding. Just look at the world, look at this universe, look around and just come to your own conclusion. Oh, 
this world, such a beautiful world, such one with such absolute perfection. What could it be? Who could be behind this? How this perfectly moving world is going on? Without a conscious entity governing this, it cannot move on. Our bodily system, if you see how it is living, what is happening, if you see, you will be wondering at it. So, we will be seeing entirely a different world of just looking at our own bodily functioning, our mind functioning, our intellect functioning, by keeping alive in this world, everything, the functioning of body itself is so wonderful. So, who, how can it happen? How can you? That itself is the proof. This world exists. I am alive. I am well, moving about in this world, understanding everything. That itself is sufficient proof that something called God exists. And to pray to that power which is governing the whole universe and it, can, it alone can awaken our spiritual consciousness, take us beyond the limitations, all limitations and make us realize. Om Shanti 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 Hari Om Tatsat Shri Ramakrishna Arpanamastu